In this how-to video, we will paint and add water effects to this Jericho wall water feature from Act 3. We were asked how does Lolit work with our Quick Cave system. QCS Terrain is an unconventional terrain design loosely based off our Dark Elf Cavern resin tiles from 2015. QCS is made of large double-sided chambers that can be played as an encounter as soon as the piece hits the table. Learn more about our Quick Cave system by visiting our website or our YouTube channel. Anyhow, QCS is compatible with Lowlit and many other terrain systems. That being said, we wanted to make a special piece to transition between QCS and Lowlit. And here is that very piece. So let's go ahead and get started. As usual, we start with our four underground terrain colors, Earthstone, Cardboard, Cavern Dry Brush, and Olive Dry Brush. We will be using a medium small brush for quickly painting rocks, a medium brush with a pointy tip, for target painting bulbs and teeth, and a large brush for dry brushing. Before we get started, I'm going to flame strike this piece to remove the nozzle strings that got left behind. The LA melts away pretty quickly. Just be careful not to hold the flame in one place too long. It seems to me it's a good idea to wear a mask. Let's start with earthstone. You can paint as many rocks as you see fit. Okay, there we go, that looks pretty good. As it turns out, I'm gonna bring in some base gray color instead of cardboard color. You don't have to do this, it's just something we wanted to see. Alright, that looks pretty good. And you know what? I think I'm going to add a little more earth stone before moving on. So now let's use cavern dry brush color over most of the entire piece. When dry brushing, it's best to get the brush saturated and then dry it out. I know, a bummer, right? So dry off the brush and start with the edges just in case your brush has too much paint. You can gauge how hard or soft to apply the brush strokes. That's looking good. Now we're going to do all the dry brush across the whole piece. Okay, that's looking really good. Now it's time to work on the pool area. We're going to go ahead and use the deep water green and target paint the middle of the pool with a medium sized brush. It doesn't have to be real pretty. We'll make it pretty with the next color. And now the next color. We're going to target paint the edges of the deep water green with shallow water green. It should look something like that. Let's go ahead and paint these two smaller pool areas which stream into the larger pool. Yeah, that's looking really good. Now it's time to paint the large mushrooms. We're gonna go ahead and use two colors, Stone Edge Dry Brush and Stucco. You may also want to use cavern dry brush over the top of this as well. With a medium brush, let's target paint these three big mushrooms with the stucco color. And as you can see, it's an off-white. Just keep working the stucco color into the mushroom from the tops to the stalks.
With the same size medium brush, let's paint the bulbs with the stone edge white color and make sure to look around because there's a few different spots that have these little bulbs. So now let's take that same stone edge color and we'll use it as the highlight on the big mushrooms. Just add a little bit of paint to the top and maybe around the edges. Okay, that looks really good. We're going to go ahead and paint these creatures with deep lava and lava orange. Make sure to shake these types of paints thoroughly because they're pretty thin. And as you can see, this deep lava, it's not really deep lava looking. Let's mix it a little bit more. Okay, now that we've shaken it up a bit more, we can see we're getting a nice deep red color. Let's go around all three of these different creatures and make sure not to forget to paint the inside and around the teeth area of these creatures. Alright, now it's time for lava orange, and lava orange is going to be used around the teeth area and the upper rim. And the lava orange that we have is pretty thin, but that's okay, once it dries it'll blend very nicely. Now let's take a really nice pointy tip brush and grab either cabin dry brush or stone edge and load it up. Use the tip of the brush and carefully glide over the teeth of these creatures. And just know you don't have to do a perfect job here. They're fantasy creatures. Once the piece is painted up, it really comes together. Okay, let's let that dry, and in the meantime, we want to show you how it works with the QCS Twist and Turns O2 Chamber Tile. All QCS tiles are double-sided. We can flip this tile upside down and see how it fits together. Here's an example of Lolit working with water features and the QCS tiles. Speaking of water features, it's time to add the water effects. We're going to use this two-part clear countertop epoxy resin. Now let's measure off equal parts of part A and part B. Once the parts are measured out, we can mix them together. And let's stir these until they completely merge. Make sure to go along the edges of the bottom of the cup when stirring. Also, even though there really isn't any odor, it's best to use gloves and a mask when working with this stuff. But when stirring, there's a good chance you're going to get a lot of bubbles like we did, and that's okay. Most, if not all, the bubbles will make the way to the surface and let themselves out. We're going to go ahead and pour our epoxy resin onto our stir stick and guide it into the pool area. We're going to use the same technique to get the resin into the small pool areas, and that should do the trick. If you want to take things a little further, you can grab some cellophane and tear off a small piece and shape it into the shape of flowing water. And now drop that into the resin, and with a toothpick, adjust the piece of cellophane so that it appears to be flowing water from the little pools into the big pool. Let's do a couple more of these and we should be done with this section. The resin epoxy usually takes about 24 hours to completely harden. However, we don't have to wait 24 hours. What we're going to do is wait for the resin to become firm enough. Once it's firm enough, we're going to paint on it and we're going to add another layer of resin. 
We also want to recommend that you cover your piece while it's drying. This way you can minimize the amount of dust particles that land in the resin. It's been about eight hours later, and now we're gonna paint in some bubbles. Let's use Bubbles Blue paint. Let's add the bubbles to the waterfall area and even around the mushrooms and the corner of this piece. Okay, that's looking really good. Now we're gonna wait for this paint to dry and we're gonna add a second layer of resin. Let's measure off equal amounts of part A and part B, mix them together once again, and pour them into the large pool. And if the small pools need it, you can also top them off with a little bit of resin as well. Once that's done, let's cover it for another eight hours. And now that another eight hours has passed, this brings us to the last stage where we're gonna add a few more water bubbles. You don't wanna overdo it, so add some small bubbles at this time. I think we're done here. This is a really unique set of terrain. The 40 millimeter Jericho walls, edgeless design, and mycelium environment are sure to give your players a new and exciting realm of adventure. We hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for stopping by. If you like what we're doing here, subscribe. And if you haven't already, head over to our website and sign up for our newsletter. We often give away free 3D printable files and let you know about future crowdfunding projects. We wish you good fortune in the adventures to come.